Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about guarding your married heart. Guarding your married heart. Are you married? Well, if you are, you need to guard your heart. We know that people who aren't married need to guard their heart, but did you know that if you're married, you need to guard your heart as well? Well, let's look at Proverbs 4.23. If you haven't uh, if you're not familiar with guarding your heart or you haven't heard about it before, watch How to Guard Your Heart video that I did recently and then maybe come watch this. But we're going to review the meaning of guard your heart and then put it in the context of marriage and look at some things that can happen in marriage when we don't guard our hearts. So Proverbs 4.23 says, keep watch, keep alert over your heart with all and every effort. Do it diligently because from the heart flow the issues of life. So we're gonna keep our hearts by watching them, watching over them, guarding them, preserving them. And you wanna imagine your heart as a treasure and that there is a guard in front of your heart with a you know, semi-automatic weapon or whatever they use, a very serious weapon to guard that heart. That is how valuable the heart is, and it is to be guarded. The heart is the inner man that Ephesians talks about when it says strengthen the inner man. This is your mind, soul, and will. All means the whole, everything and everywhere. And the diligence that the verse talks about in how we are to guard our heart diligently, it's referring to a prison or jail where someone is observing something or someone in confinement or in custody. And this is referring to a heart that may be wounded, that may be wayward, a heart that needs protection, that could uh, leap out and injure itself like a little child that doesn't know any better. So we're to guard our hearts in a type of prison, not in a negative way, but in a positive way, a protective place where we can watch over our hearts, where it's in our own confinement that we choose to give it, to protect it. And it can be in our custody because we're to have dominion over our own hearts. And the Holy Spirit will teach you to do this. From it flow the, the springs of life. From it means an outgoing, something coming from your heart, escaping from your heart, an extremity, and it's a source. So our heart is a source, and the source is life. That is when Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. And he also said, I am the resurrection and the life. So this is the life that lives in the heart that we are guarding. Ultimately, we are guarding the treasure of our heart. Why? Because Jesus Christ lives there. That is his abode, is our hearts. All right? So when it talks about guarding your heart, does it ever say anywhere that we're to stop guarding our hearts? No, it doesn't. If you find the verse, send it to me. Send it to me. The scripture tells us to guard our hearts always, at all times, and in every single circumstance. Always. Okay? Something this, uh, a treasure this important, with this inside of it, would never have a time that it wouldn't be guarded. The heart, the human heart, for the believer anyway, is the source of life. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the source of life who lives in the heart. And guarding the heart is protecting the vessel where he is dwelling, living, where he is alive inside of us. So, yes, unmarried people need to guard their hearts, of course, but married people need to guard their hearts as well. And this is very important. You may not realize that married people need to guard their hearts from their spouse, yes, 
from their children if they have children and from other people and maybe relatives and people outside the family. You need to guard your heart from your spouse. Now, failing to guard your heart can allow your heart, failure to guard your heart in the marriage relationship can allow your heart to be so wounded by your spouse that inside your heart, you turn away from the marriage. That's what happened to me. I wasn't in it anymore. I was just going through the motions, but my heart had left. My husband knows all about this, so I'm not saying anything that he doesn't know and doesn't understand. Also, failing to guard your heart when you're married can allow outsiders to seduce you away from the marriage. They, it can allow outsiders to invade your heart or to disrupt your marriage. Satan will send people into your life to disrupt your marriage. And this is just a very common thing. So be aware. If some man is coming up to you and flirting with you and saying, oh, you're so wonderful, or some woman is coming to around, hanging around you or emailing you or whatever, just be aware. These type of things happen. But the main point is that whether you're not married or you are married, the heart is the target of the enemy. It's the target of the enemy. The heart is the target, and he will send darts from yourself. When we condemn ourselves, judge ourselves, say ugly things to ourselves, sin against ourselves, the enemy is using us against our own hearts. He can definitely use our spouse against our hearts to wound us. He can definitely use our spouse against us in our marriage to target our hearts, to make us feel depressed, to wound us. And then, of course, he can use others, relatives, neighbors, friends, um, co-workers, to wound us. So it's very important to keep your heart guarded, protected at all times. There is never a time ever in your entire life that you should stop guarding your heart. That is how much of a treasure your heart is. So you, as I've said in other videos, you, if you're a believer, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple that is housing the Holy Spirit. You're walking around, carrying around the Holy Spirit with you wherever you go. And your heart is the Holy of Holies of the temple. Think about this. Was the temple ever left unguarded? Was the temple ever allowed reckless people to just go in there and do whatever they wanted? What about looters? Were they allowed in the temple? What about graffiti artists? No, of course not. They were never ever allowed inside the temple. And likewise, your heart must be protected from those kind of people, no matter what they look like on the outside. What's coming from their heart and their mouth can wound you. And so beware of that and protect yourself. Okay, so guarding your heart means guarding it all the time. There's never a time that you should stop guarding your heart. And you can ask the Lord to help you, teach you this. You can watch the video, How to Guard Your Heart, that I did recently. And then you can ask the Lord to teach you about this. Because you want to get to a place where you do it naturally. You have an internal boundary between you and other people, and they can say whatever they want. And you know that those words are coming out of their heart. And if they're ugly words, you know that there's an ugly place in their heart. And you can say, wow, that person is saying some ugly things. Those ugly things are coming from their heart. And those words are his words or her words. They're not my words. I didn't say that. And you can have that boundary and just let people say whatever they want and you don't get offended because you're guarding your heart. And you don't get wounded because you're guarding your heart. Okay? It's kind of like the video I did on standing. Just the same type of thing. When you're learning how to stand in the grace of God, you want to learn how to stand your whole life and never get knocked off. It's the same kind of thing. You want to learn how to guard your heart 
all your life, just like you learn how to stand in the grace of God your whole life. So let's read it one more time. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance or diligence above all that you guard, for from it flow the springs of life. And again, the springs of life are Jesus Christ, the living water flowing out of you. And that's in John 7, 37 and 7, 38. And this is what will happen. The chances of this greatly increase the more you guard your heart is that the living waters bubble up and flow out of you. And then the good word translation says, guard your heart more than anything else because the source of your life flows from it. And then John 7, 38 says, he who believes in me from him, from him shall flow rivers of living water. This is Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit living in you. So the takeaway point is you've got to guard your heart, whether you're unmarried or married, and especially if you're married. And the more you guard your heart, the more you are preparing a place and protecting a place for the Holy Spirit to dwell, for Jesus Christ to sit on the throne of your heart, and for His Spirit and His life and His love to flow through you all the time. So the more you protect your heart, the more you're going to see that happen. The chances are going to increase. All right? So married people, guard your hearts, and let me know what's going on with you in your journey in learning how to guard your heart. Leave some comments or email me and we can talk about it. All right, I'll see you next time.